DEA Utica music. That is what echoed from the organ through the halls of the mansion. It had been going on for days, only stopping for a moment, so the one playing that organ, the mansion's master, could have a sip of water. And then it would continue once more. Each note alluring to those listening. So much so that a young maid was, who was new to the palace staff followed the ongoing melody to its source, the old organ in the mansion's ballroom. As she lay a hand on the shining doorknob, her wrist was grabbed by one of the men who worked as a butler. She gasped, looking up to him with her bright blue eyes. I'm sorry, madame, but you shouldn't bother the master while he works, the man mourned. He was rather tall, with a short black hair and aging face. He had seen better days. Perhaps he was tired. Who could sleep with the constant echoing music playing throughout the house? Her eyes narrowed toward the man as she took back her hand. The master has not left that room for three days unless it was to use the bathroom. It is unhealthy. She turned the knob and cracked open the door, poking her head in to see the back of the mansion's master as he sat at the organ. No, I beg you, the man whispered, grabbing her for her, but she was already through the door. The man knowing better, standing in the hallway. Um, she whispered to the organ. She walked to the organ, which seemed to be an antique when she looked at it. Excuse me, Master? He didn't stop playing. She got closer and put her hand where his next note would have been. She's a dead girl, the man thought, holding in his breath. Brave but dead. The Master of the House. A man slightly older than the maid quickly turned his head to declare her with dark eyes. How dare you interrupt me? She stepped back out of his reach. Master? She gathered her courage in the face of the lion. It has been three days. You have not eaten nor slept. As a member of the house staff, I am worried. Let me get you something to eat, please. He looked into those eyes, as blue as the ocean, and scowled. I am fine. Now be gone. He turned back to the organ, beginning the song again from the very first note. She sighed. Very well. She turned to the leave, an idea coming to her mind. A small smile crossed her face as she walked past the baffled man. Excuse me, but how are you still alive, or at the very least not in tears? He followed her down the hall. He didn't yell at me, but he was not happy that I stopped from playing. She frowned as she looked up to his face. I heard, he grimaced. But I have an idea. Her smile returned. And that would be? This girl was a strange one, not here for a week, and already had not only met the master, but was planning on trying to help him. You'll find out. She descended the stairs that were used by service to get to their quarters. And the kitchen. She entered the massive kitchen usually used when the master hosted the rare ball or gala. She dug a tea pot out from one of the cabinets and proceeded to wash the dust from it before she filled it with water, putting it on the stove. 
Do you have any keybacks? She asked the butler who had followed her as he was now curious. Yes, on the top shelf of the spice rack. I'll get them short one. He smiled. Why are they on the spice rack? Don't call me short. But it was true. She stood no more than five feet four inches tall. Don't ask me, I don't work down here. He shrugged, going to get for what she asked for. He handed her the small paper bag box of strong smelling tea bags. The honey's in the cabinet over there, he pointed to the cabinet door above the stove. And lemons are, he looked around. Ah, he found them sitting in the small bowl on the counter opposite the stove. Here, I'll cut one up for you. Thank you. She looked around for a cup and saucer that nearly matched. He seemed to have no matching sets. Um, does the master break a lot of dishes? Unfortunately, yes. He has quite a temper, and a few plates and cups have learned to fly. He shook his head. I see. So maybe we should order new sets then. Now she's a killing time before the kettle boils. Agreed, but the challenge is getting his permission. He seems to be possessed. Because all he thinks about is finishing that piece. She ran a hair, a hand through her red, dark red hair. I can see that being a problem. Maybe we can get that done if we can get him away from that organ. She was silent for a moment. Oh, I'm sorry, I never told you my name. It's Alexia. My friends call me Lexi. My name is Cedric. He bowed to her. And if you can get our master's mind back in order, we all owe you a great deal. Hopefully the tea will help if you'll drink it. It'll calm his nerves and maybe make him tired enough to actually get some sleep. Good luck. I shall return to my duties. If a cook finds you in here, just explain that you're the new maid and he'll leave you alone. 